everything in its path. So to make sure that there's such decimation in that path does not occur, so while we're in a triple planetary crisis, Pakistan just endured a triple planetary flood. And this monsoon on steroids, as the Secretary General says, is a climate disaster of the decade. Why we have to be mindful is that climate is not in any one country's control. Neither is, is its impact. It, what happened in Pakistan will not stay in Pakistan. So every country will face a cascade of such events at one point or another. You, Western Europe's already feeling it. But, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, what we just saw was a postcard from the edge of a memo from nature. This memo was not to Pakistan. It was to humanity. It was for people to make the right decisions. Uh, it was for redistributive justice, which is obviously climate justice in any words. And for that reason, I am very clear in what we are taking to COP. Uh, my colleagues here mentioned to us it's the most important conference of the year, always, of all times. And we're hoping that countries will understand uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the heavy lift beyond the humanitarian need and understand that when climate disasters hit, there needs to be recovery windows that climate in, uh, disaster prone and vulnerable countries can access with speed, agility and predictability. If a climate disaster hits my country or yours, you should be able to draw on first needs, resources, immediately. No one country can service 33 million people at one go. I'm, I I'm seriously would be challenged to hear that. And so we're very grateful for all our partners. But please also bear in mind uh, and that, that we have to make some planning changes. We have to think about rebuilding uh, with great resilience. And do, in doing so, in doing so, Resilience rebuilding also requires a great amount of technical capacity. It needs political heft on the ground. Please, 10 communities move away from the village that you've lived in for centuries. We cannot, we cannot allow you to live here. You can't police people to become climate resilient. You have to give them incentives. Those incentives are rooted in better livelihoods, a more productive year, an income stream that is not unreliable for them. After the loss of livestock and crop, that is a great worry. And that's a, that's a recurring anxiety. And it is on our calendar of totally, uh, to, uh, of imminent anxieties, which is how will these people actually get back on their feet with a future of an income stream that is predictable. So building all of that requires a great deal of technical capacity. And I'm sorry to bring this up here, but it requires a great deal more of funding than just humanitarian recovery. Climate, uh, resilient infrastructure, rebuilding requires a large envelope of funds. It also requires the technical and scientific capacity on the ground to build the advice chain. Uh, to resume our supply chains, we need all that. And, and so we're bringing it up at COP uh, for, for not just loss and damage, but for adaptation to be at the heart of recovery for countries that are in the front line, literally the ground zero of climate-induced disasters. We may or may not experience all of this the next year, but we will certainly be facing the drought. We will certainly be facing a heat wave and our glaciers will be melting very fast. So with these few words, I just want to say, let's, let's not vulnerability become a death sentence or a life sentence for countries like us. Let us be, let us be collectively mindful of our responsibilities, also our jobs on the ground here, and uh, hope that we can reset the bargain between the global north and the south as we go into rebuilding our future here. So with those words, I want to thank all of you, and uh, particularly our host, the planning ministry, and the minister, Hassan Iqbal, who spent day and night, I, I don't know when he sleeps, on this, and uh, all partners here. Again, my apologies, uh, World Bank, for keeping you up all night. <laughs> thank you very much.